Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, and yes, it's a new shirt day. It's a new month, and we got plenty to talk about. But as always, wishing you the best, the best, the happiest of the happiest. Just wishing you well over here from Helsinki, Finland. Another very early morning for myself, but I finished all the necessary pounds of ground beef and coffee to get this started. So let's go into the live scene right over here as we check up on good old Cone, Mr. Bitcoin, and the daily. Daily, wow, we have more of the same. As the monthly has ended, we have we have very clearly ended this month on a pretty sour note, pretty much essentially on the lows, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as the daily is concerned another just essential uh, essentially a follow-through from the uh, from the last rejection on the daily 10 simple moving average right over here i do consider that a rejection of the 10 moving average uh, sorry the red moving average i should say i should actually clot the uh, the color and overall we are still getting that volume signature of consolidation which in the context of this current price action is very constructive which would essentially suggests that this is going to be a bearishly resolved consolidation. Now, again, because this volume is really tailing off to get to those like very much lower ends, very much lower ends, Jesus Christ, man, talk like Bobby Bottle Service, God damn it. Um, <laughs> and if you know who that is, that's even better. Uh, but basically, let me actually just get everything off. Uh, we'll do it like this. And, and you see this like very obvious and uh, and lovely tail off of volume. Well, that's telling us that this, that this pattern is getting very much near completion and it's ready to blow just about any minute. I would imagine that the next big move is likely to either break this or we're gonna have a or, or we're gonna have a nice up to uh, or we're gonna have a nice move to the upside now of course that's that's like the that's like the technical thing that all analysts always say is like it could go up or down or maybe even sideways and maybe even to the left if things get really fucking crazy well no of course not i need to be a little more specific with that to separate myself from your general fucking bitcoin's going to five thousand right now uh type person and what do i have to do to say that well essentially as long as bitcoin is below this 10 simple moon average right here um below about 3469 because that's a great number uh, the, the this this is a bearish consolidation and very 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 likely to be resolved to the downside. Um, as soon as you know the the next move likely to be at the downside, uh, if that is the case. But hey, does that mean that Bitcoin can't get back above that area? Of course not. Of course, Bitcoin can certainly get back above that area, and uh, just to kind of mark it out on the charts right over here. As long you know, if Bitcoin gets back above this area right over here, then it's time to reconsider. It's no long, you know I'd be looking for a nice run back up, uh, probably back above 3,500 and test the monthly 55 exponential. So again, you know, as long as this this criteria is met, I am looking for further downside. Um, as we do have continuation off of the rejection and what is really just another lower high um, from yesterday. This is, I mean, that's all that this is right over here, all the way up to, I believe, a daily. Uh, yeah, so 12 hour, you know, lower high right over there, just another series of lower highs confirmed. Uh, daily, yep, confirmed lower high as well. So overall, you know, we're just getting more of the same. Essentially, you know, we've been putting in lower highs for the last over a year, and this is another one of those lower highs. Now, when I do look at this, and I do look at our high time frame also, I do, uh, do want to check on the daily. Daily stokes are still crossed down. We did get that rejection from getting out of the bearish control zone. So that was your big tell, you know, on the pump up to this area right over here. Or sorry, the, be, before this drop right over here, that was, you know, the big tell that we were likely to have this resolve to the downside. We do have DMI ADX actually giving a fresh short signal. And now this is pointed back upward, nice and erect and very, very powerful indeed, as that is a fresh short, as, as again, that is a completely fresh signal. Uh, daily RSI over here, trending below the exponential, you know, in the, in the deep grip. Of, of the bearish con uh, control territory again not necessarily the best sign um and also we got the jewel down around here which which basically gave the short when it was time to actually like you know take the short right over here of course the jewel is just it's just powerful in and of itself but i probably don't i probably shouldn't talk about that anyways uh Let's get. Let's actually go down. Uh, or, uh, no, sorry. While we're here, let's go through the higher time frames because we're closing a two day later tonight as well. Two day again. As long as we're essentially below this area, um, and really from the two day perspective, as long as we're closing two day dildos below thirty five thirty, you know, overall very, 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 very bearish. Um, uh, structure that we're looking at right over here. If Bitcoin can close above that, uh, uh, above that 35, 30-ish mark, then then things do change around a little bit. And I would actually be looking for a run at least to about 3,700. And uh, we can discuss that idea as we get on to the higher time frames. But I do want to point out that the two-day stokes over here, which were suggesting at a cross to the upside, of course not confirmed. Uh, yesterday, when Bitcoin was around, you know, 34, 20-ish area, they are no longer in that posturing because this is, you know, th this is why it's so 
so important to wait for actual confirmation if you're going to trade stuff like this uh as you can see now that they are you know they're still certainly losing momentum but at the same point in time uh they are no longer crossed so it's not necessarily giving you a signal and we will get another tick on that tonight later tonight at 7 p.m eastern in time we got the same thing on the dmi adx another short signal dmx signal you know rough ride as 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 the saying goes and uh do we have anything on the jewel over here yeah jewel's actually coming down to the, ooh, the last line of defense again i don't like taking i don't like taking orders from the jewel in this zone but it it it's it's pretty fucking powerful so i'll just leave it at that rsi basically looks, looks the same as the uh, as the daily except we do have the hidden bearish divergence on this point and this point and likely to come back down over here as we're kind of wrangled below that exponential uh i should also show my positions i forgot to update this i did get rid of a lot of my uh a lot of my scalp short right over here on the last down the reason why I did that is because this is again it's my streamer account and I don't want to I don't want to hold a fucking 80 Bitcoin short on this account it's just a baby account you know um, it's just not worth it to me uh, my again my priorities rely uh, or lay lie what what's the word my priorities are with perhaps is the right terminology um, my main account this just being my streamer account you know I was happy to let go let go of some of that that I started at 3420 I am still short from uh, 6300 overall and uh, I'll be looking to put on an options position for the first time in a while now as I do you see some plays uh prevalent so so we'll see how that goes but for now um that's essentially what i'm holding as long as we are again below this uh this 34 i mean really 34 30 more importantly but or sorry 34 30 more aggressively but uh but but below that 35 30 area that we looked at before um what do we have on the three day uh three days not closing tonight i think we just closed one but you know just more of the same essentially the last kind of tick on the rsi did take us below the exponential over there three day uh stoke still crossed down you know again getting rejected from getting out of the out of the neutral zone so just awesome between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone anytime that this thing crosses down it's 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 spelled not too good things for mr bitcoin this was your break of 6,000 right over here. This was, you know, a nice little, you know, f this was one of the dumps uh, from 6,000. Another one of the dumps in that 6,000 range. This was a dump from 8,000 to 6,000. This was a dump from 10,000 to, uh, sorry, almost 10,000 to, what was it, like, you know, uh, high 6,000s, I believe it was. Something like that. So overall, um, historically speaking, whenever you get across on that, it does have implications. However, in a consolidation nation, uh, the dumps are, you know, are, are not as powerful as you saw right over here, although you still did have them, whether it was right here or right here, you know, still it still did play out but you know as far as the three day total time frame goes it's actually quite simple and if you do want to simplify things this is you know this is a way to be doing it we knew once once we broke below 36 uh, 90 right over here about a you know a month ago now <laughs> oh my god it's february by the way happy february um <laughs> february february <laughs> february is impossible to say man <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as long as we're below this area, you know, that, that was kind of the impetus for taking some shorts in this area. Then we broke basically below this kind of, uh, this kind of local low right over here. And, you know, we're basically getting the same thing right now and, and having continuation from there is what it looks like to me. So yeah. Um, did we, uh, yeah, we looked at the all sorters. Yeah. Basically all the same. Uh, and yes, the big news for today is we will be looking at the monthly and also the four day. So the four day will be getting a new tick tonight and the four day is, one tick away from confirming a four-day dildo death cross. The second time we'll ever have one in Bitcoin's history. The only other time that we've ever actually even had one was over here in 2014, which didn't really have much of an effect because, again, these you know the, these higher-level dildo timeframes were a little bit too you know they're, they're they're too much higher level higher or higher time frame to account for on an asset that you know at this point in time had only been around for or only really been traded for four to five years now we've got about eight to nine years under our belt and so does that have some some further crossover well it's again it's not a perfect cross you really want to see price action closer to it and spit out but as you can see right over here you do have this consolidation so when that cross if and when that crossover again a lot of things can happen before 7 p.m eastern east standard time when this gets sets in stone but uh that you know if bitcoin rallies up uh to the to the low five thousands this the crisis will be averted so you always got to offer up that but assuming that it does not well that would confirm a death cross on the four-day total time frame and what does that tell us about price action more importantly than anything than, than trying to be mr uh you know uh, crystal ball well it tells us that the bots and algos are likely to intensify their selling algos um their selling programs essentially and you know they when when you're right at a, a support a major support like this a quite literally a yearly support the yearly lows um that doesn't usually end up too damn well <laughs> put it that way i'll put it that way even in 2014 what it actually did cross um you actually did have some nice down momentum off it. But again, remember, Bitcoin was relatively young in this space over here. So it didn't really have enough time to actually uh, populate that that sort of a thing. And you'd imagine that now that it's had about double the time now, um, 
you know, it's it's likely to have more of an effect as uh, as as more and more of those algos start to account for that sort of a thing. Anyways, um, looking at this guy right over here, you know, same thing with our same same thing with our Stokes. We're actually about to confirm a cross to the downside. Each and every one of these is actually very similar to the three day. You can see that we actually even have resistance right at this, you know, basically at the edge of the bearish control zone. So as long as we're below there and crossing down below there, that tells me that the bears want to keep control. Fucking obviously, you know, but it just helps confirm that factor, especially when it's you know it's likely to be confirmed uh, again later tonight, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and, each, and each and every one of these, you know, again, kind of giving you a massive, massive dump, not as accurately as a three day, but again, giving us confluence with the overall price action. And for myself, it's more important about the control zones in that one and how, you know, and how it's responding around those areas. But anyways, all of this is secondary to what we're about to discuss the monthly the monthly is the most important thing on the charts right now because we just set in a new one yes again welcome to february i guess blx index hasn't hasn't updated yet they have a they have a different close i suppose but if we go over here to bitstamp which has um you know yes we have very obviously closed below that green 55 exponential so this offers up some very interesting things bitcoin has never broken the 55 exponential in you know in, 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 its, in its overall history now again that's more of a testament to the fact that bitcoin is relatively young um do you have the right one in here it should be going back there oh wow i guess we have to go to the blx yeah so in the blx you know the, the 55 actually did hold up the uh the full you know basically basically the last market cycle low over here from 2014 2015 era obviously before that time you know we didn't even have ticks on it because again it needs it, it quite literally needs 55 months to just get one tick and this being your first one right over here now we actually have some history to go off of this is the first time that it's actually technically broke it where does your target become if that you know when that breaks if and when that breaks well down around here right around the 2450 area this 89 exponential uh, moving average over here same sort of a thing with this guy though you know we really don't have too much too much time or, or we don't really have enough time to really populate this one either but overall that is where a lot of uh, a lot of people have their eyes and with the with with the closure below this area right over here and we'll, we'll go back to bitstamp right over here because they actually do come in around the same area even though that this one was started much later um as 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 long as we're below this area i'm very, 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 very bearish. Um, doesn't mean that we can't have pumps up. And I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure that you will have your rallies in, in overall bear market. I mean, we've seen, we've seen it, you know, Bitcoin essentially after getting off its lows, it rallied quite literally about a thousand over a thousand dollars from 3,100 to 4,200 or, or and such, which was, a, which was a phenomenal percentage gain. Right. Uh, so certainly nothing to balk at, but uh, keeping this in mind, always keep in mind the higher time frames. That's why I go over, you know, these, these little bit more obscure ones, uh, like the monthly, the two day, three day, all those all those sorts of things because again my sort of background i come from as a market maker in, in equity options and i'm used to looking at these higher time frames on well equities which have decades and decades of price action um history to go off of so to me this is very important right over here and overall it does not look good we have monthly stokes over here still headed down didn't even lose any momentum on the way down yes they are in the more critical zone but as you can see when bitcoin trends this thing can stay very high and very low for quite some time you know even even over here it takes some time for it to actually like turn around uh did that call the low in 2014 yeah it actually did huh funnily enough so again until this thing actually starts turning i i you know historically speaking we don't really have anything to be aware of from there uh rsi over here ticking a little bit more deep into the um into the uh into the monthly zone sorry into the bearish control zone let's go over here to the new one yeah again this is quite literally the most intense downwards pressure we've ever seen in bitcoin throughout its history according to the rsi and i and, you know i could pull up uh, multiple things that show that this is you know quite literally the most intense uh downwards market bitcoin that's ever seen so does that mean that it's likely to go lower? Well, yeah, actually, I mean, I mean, it's we we I don't believe that we've seen the lows just yet. Although we are getting closer and closer. And you know what? I'll actually show a few things that um that align with that fact, and I'm happy to do so because remember perspective here. So I'm going to uh, bring up the accumulation distribution indicator, the net the net delta. I typically don't I I typically don't bring this up, but because I I really only care about it on like a weekly and a monthly, and uh, and I care about the slope. And you know what? Right here, right now, we have seen the slope actually get positive for the first time, literally, since it turned around over here. But you can, but as you can see in 2014, you did have a little bit of a fake out uh, before the ultimate doom drop and, and the low was put in. So again, when it comes down to it, you know, does this mean that the buyer market's over? No, but it does mean that it's kind of losing in its grips. We are closer to getting to the end of it than not, than, or at least than we were before, which is kind of a nonsense statement. And hey, what's up? Uh, yeah. 
AMA 016. Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, that's a nonsense statement of what I just said. But my point is, is that it would su suggest that this thing is getting, you know, closer and closer. And uh, and we actually seeing signs of some things letting up now, which is, you know, I mean, it's a more positive thing. I want to have a positive message. I do believe in Bitcoin long term. But hey, you know, yeah, we do have our first tick technically up now. Again, this is, <laughs> this is a little bit dubious what I'm about to say as well, because this is also not necessarily confirmed. This is a tick that is actually operating right now. So if Bitcoin were to turn down and break to new lows, then this slope is obviously going to change <laughs> once again. But for right now, we have a positive slope. If Bitcoin can keep it here, uh, and I'd imagine as long as it's above about 3,100 ish area, it probably will be positive. Uh, more importantly, let's go check out the weekly. Weekly is interesting to me as well on this accumulation distribution uh, net delta indicator because looking at this guy down around here we have a positive we actually do have a positive slope and confirmed as of uh as of our last uh, weekly deal to open you'll notice over here though we have a lot of similarities between 2014 once again i know i always bring this up but again you know market cycles between different assets are sorry market cycles between different trading classes whether it's you know whether it's where i come from in in equities whether it's you know forex commodities or yes magic internet money we see the same sort of signatures in the overall market cycle and with that, it, I mean, basically because we're, be, we're dealing with humans across across everything. So that's the one, you know, relating factor. And, you know, on top of that, we're all kind of bound by that whole psych psychological aspect of these markets. So when talking, when looking at market cycles of other of, of other assets, we can make a lot of relations and come up with general rules. And then the particular asset that we're looking at here, in this case, Bitcoin, has its own personality. So we're looking at the personality right now from a historical standpoint into how Bitcoin actually plays out its market cycles. And you can see over here that actually we have a lot of similarities. Uh, Bitcoin, you know, you know, put in its I mean, this one really got fucking overdone over here. Um, we can basically see our, our parabolic top being put in right over here, come down on that first drop down to uh, to to those low six thousands, I believe, um, you know, come put in some red, you know, pop back up, put in your bull trap right over here, put in your bull trap right over here. And except in 2018, it was much more extended. Um, again, uh, 2018 has been a much more dubious, uh, dubious um uh, market cycle and again this is why you can't this is why fractals are not the right way to be doing things you can't say that just because oh you did this over here you're definitely going to do this over here no it's a general feeling of this which we can get from something like this but we can't literally say well we went oh, we okay so on this day and that market cycle we definitely went up this way. it's like no it doesn't work like that and it's very 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 naive to think so and it's very misleading when people perpetuate that myth um but as you can see over here you know after you put in the bull trap you do actually pop down put it you know put in uh, a, a, a low and then you actually pop down again and put in the ultimate low right over here. So we're we're kind of in the process of still doing that first one. Yes, the slope has lessened up, um, but it's still got you know still got a ways to go. And that really does align with my ideas that uh, we're doing something like this area right over here. Again, it's not one to one. It doesn't mean that just because in that fractal we have fractal over here and we're going you know we have to go back up to four thousand. I would say that's extremely unlikely right now. And you know what I'd actually be comfortable saying right now is with keeping in mind the monthly. I would be extremely confident in saying that Bitcoin will see below uh, 3,000 and probably you probably into like mid 2,000, something like that, before it goes back above 4,000 or, or more accurately 4,100. I don't believe that we're going higher than the high of the last monthly dildo, essentially. I don't even believe that we're going to go higher than the last, you know, monthly 55 exponential, which is all the way at 3650 uh, ish area. So, again, for all the people, you know, talking about fucto, we have fucto, guys, I have been doing. <laughs> I don't know why I do in that voice. <laughs> I've done the analysis, okay? I've done the analysis. All right, I've been looking at this with a microscope for the last day, okay? I started using technical analysis two months ago. <laughs> I know my Elliott wave. I've been listening to Hagen Re, and, <laughs> and I use my stochastic RSI and my harmonics, and I use fractals. And now I can tell you, Bitcoin did this in 2014, we go to tw we go to forty four hundred now. It's that simple. Fatal. It's like no, not necessarily the way that it works. Actually, in fact, again, that's why you always go back to that discussion that you see similarities between different market cycles, but to call out one to one things, it's extreme. I mean, just so fucking misleading, so naive. And I'll even go through much more in depth on why I think that we're more 
more deep into this territory. Sorry, I just got rid of the thing that I wanted to, to talk about, but let's actually go back to this and I'm gonna show a few new things um, on this uh, on this video. But basically the, the accumulation distribution indicator, we have basically the same read, right? You know, you're putting your high right over here, putting your high right over here, dump down, uh, putting your first bull trap right over here, first bull trap right over here. Then we start getting into the more crazy areas, which is what we're doing right now, it feels like. After your bull trap, we come back down and, uh, and put in this area that we're looking at right over here. And you basically see the same read on the accumulation distribution indicator right over there. Not only that, that. But if you go over here to, um, if we just go over to price action and we do something very simple, we look at the volume characters, the volume signature of this area. You see a very, you see a lot of similarities between this guy right over here and your parabolic cycle right over here in relation to how this guy over here played out in relation to its parabolic cycle right over here. Just as an aside, if and when Bitcoin actually does get the more violent capitula form of capitulation, which is not necessary, you might get a, a much more boring and slow form of capitulation, which is in my opinion, probably worse, uh, or it would be a lot worse to sit through. Um, you know, uh, I'm looking for a volume like this in relation to this guy right over here on your ultimate low. That would be the more violent way that, or the more violent signature that I'd be looking for. As you can see, you know, we are nowhere near this volume in 2018, and especially this is this is extra, you know, extra dubious just because this volume is measured in coins traded, not dollars traded. So when Bitcoin is all the way, you know, around 10,000, 12,000 average price and volumes up here, and then we have an average price of Bitcoin around here, around 3,500 bucks, the volume over here is quite literally even less than what you did over here. In fact, we can look at it in dollars traded rather than, um, rather than coins traded. And if we pull that up right over here, you can see very, very easily that in 2018, it ain't nowhere fucking near uh, your parabolic cycle right over here. That's my point. So Again, um, a lot of interesting things between these two. Not only that, but again, I, I know I do this every day and it's probably boring for the people who have uh, seen this a lot of times, but it is good for repetition. And, uh, you know, the descending triangle that kind of led into this major down first right over here. Again, this descending triangle about 52 and at 52, 53% down. We have the same thing right over here. A nice descending triangle. That's why Bitcoin loves its triangles, as do I, and jumps down all the way into this 52% dump over here, then pumps all the way back up to, you know, another, you like, what was it, like 25, 20, 28%. Something like that, and then we have a bit about the same thing in uh, in 2018. Not only that, but again, bringing up the MVT signal, which is what I do want to uh, put some some weight on right now, is Bitcoin's actually pumping up back above the, back around that 3400 level. Put on the daily, it only works on the daily. Again, a very uh, a distantly related um, oscillator in in relation to price action. We do have a very similar read on this area. You know, looking at this area right over here, we do see a lot of similarities. But I'm but I want to present something new today. Um, I want to present something new today. And essentially, you know, you have your parabolic top right over here in 2013. Then you pop, then you pump back down or you pop back down. You don't pump, and then you pump back up, putting your bull trap right over here. And then this is the area that we were looking at on price action right over here that we're making a relation with. And we're basically oscillating around this 90 level right over here. But look at the signature on this oscillator. It comes down, puts in a low right here, pumps up, puts in another low right over here, and then actually makes a higher high right over here. Now let's mark this area off and we'll go look at it in 2018. And just scroll on over here and you can see that we are literally right in the same area. But for all, for all the Mr. Fractalers out there, you do see the same sort of a signature where you dump down, you pump up, and then you dump back down, and then you put in this higher high right over here, and then you come back down again. And now we're once once again below the exponent, or sorry, the moving average on this guy as well. So what does that mean? Well, that actually means if you are if, if you are following the fractal, which again is not something that I believe in, but if you are looking at this with a, with a more unique perspective on essentially how price action is reacting in relation to our external factors and something that actually is relatable over time, that would be suggesting that this thing is probably more ready to it's probably more ready to go lower before it goes higher sooner rather than later. To put it lightly. So again, um, that is huh, not the best sign. Now I've completely ne ne neglected the lower time frames, but that is for good reason right now. And we'll actually go into them right now. But overall, the lower time frames take a back seat when we're talking about shit that like just happened like a monthly. That is much more important. But basically, in the lower time frames, the big area to be aware of to the upside is as long as we're below 34, you know, 69, 34, 80 ish area. Don't there's there, there's no nothing's really changed. You know, again, it's just a it's just another lower high, and uh, and as long and then more importantly, as long as we're below 35, 30 a share right over here. I don't see any any particular reason to be overall looking for a run back up to. 
to perhaps test the, the 55 exponential on the monthly, which remember comes all the way around about 36, uh, 3650 ish area now, now as we just got that new tick by the, by the other hand of the uh, token, we do have this area down around here. That's a current support down around 3360 uh, ish area. It should also match up with the fib, um, coming off this whole retracement of our pump so far. Let's just make that, let's just make that right. Yeah. It matches up with the 786 down around here. You also notice that the 886 matches up beautifully with that 3250 area that I'm watching to the downside. As long as Bitcoin's essentially above this 3250 area right over here, I don't want to be, you know, too damn bearish. Although I do believe, I strongly believe that Bitcoin will be headed to new lows. But uh, until Bitcoin actually closes the daily doodle below there, you know, want to be more, want to be a little bit careful. Although with that last monthly set in place, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not the most bullish thing of all time. I'll put it that way. Um, so yeah, uh, 786 still kind of holding that support right around 3360. So as long as we're kind of holding above this area, again, don't want to be, don't want to get too damn bearish, but as long as we're below this area right over here, I have zero reason to be, to be bullish. And in fact, we are getting a, uh, we are getting an awesome read into the inside of what the bots and algos are doing in this market, uh, based off the, just the fibs right over here, which is pretty damn simple. Um, we have, you know, we, we have this nice pump up over here. That's what gives us the nice retracement. And then, you know, you have this first drop over here, 618 gets front ran. What's the target going to be, you know, right around here, around the two. 236 pumps, uh, dumps back down to the 618, gets picked up once again by the bots, and uh, and then what's their target going to be? 382, then dumps back down again to the 618. Oh my God, they pick it up once again. What's their target going to be? Just walking it down to the 0.5. You're probably noticing a, a a pattern here. Then we actually finally lose the 618. Now when things get picked up on the 786 down around here, the next sort of thing, the next sort of insight of what the boss and algos are doing is that as long as we are below the 618, this is an incredibly bearish, uh, this is an, inc an incredibly bearish setup. So to me, the fact that Bitcoin put in essentially another lower high below the 618 is very, very important. It does increase the likelihood that this thing dumps before it, you know, before putting, you know, basically before putting it in, in another local, major local low. Um, so again, if you know, I want to see that area defended. If this thing is to re to remain the more uh, the more bearish uh, posturing, as those as essentially the you know, that would be the more bearish setup from an algo uh, perspective. Um, just kind of getting walked down over here. Of course, if the seven eight six breaks, then I'd be looking towards the eight eight six down around here thirty two fifty, which Bitcoin does seem to like. Sorry about that burp. That was really really nasty. So unprofessional. I, I apologize about that. Um, and, uh, and and that actually lines up with this with this formation that we've been looking at for quite some time over here, this symmetrical triangle, right? The symmetrical triangle that still is very much uh, valid and very much available, and that's pointing all the way down. Measure move to about 32, a little about 32, 60 a share, 32, 70, whatever it is, down around here. So I looked at for good confluence. Overall, this is you know it's just governing our lower highs. If we just extend this guy, and we are essentially making a what looks to be a descending triangle. So if it does bounce off that 3250 area, you know, that is why I don't want to be too damn bearish because it reminds me a lot of 6,000 right over here where Bitcoin was just, you know, you know, kind of tagging it down and then, uh, and then pump it back up. Maybe we, maybe we tag down to 3250 and then pump back up to test the green 55 on the monthly and then, you know, and then, and then roll over, or maybe it's just a straight shot down, but that's why 3250 is very important to me. It's either a daily close below a daily dildo close below a very girthy, a very tight and a very shiny dildo below 3250. 50 on a daily or a weekly dildo close below the 200 simple, which is right around 3,300, whichever one happens first, um, I would be taking, you know, I'd be looking for the next step down now, because this is likely a descending triangle. We can make a measure move off this baby. And if I just go over here, where's it going to point down to you already fucking know you already fucking know. So it's uh, down around 30, uh, sorry, 2,300. Well, that sounds very, very familiar to what we looked at on the monthly. Remember the monthly coming all the way around, um, all the way around the 89 exponential right around here, which was, uh, 2400 a share. Close enough is close enough to me. Again, if we put on the weekly right over here, we do have also the blue 377 exponential coming in right around that area and a, an incredibly powerful one from traditional markets. I'm very curious to see if it gets play in, in Bitcoin land, which I would assume it probably does. Um, and if we go back on over here to the Bitstamp chart, well, we can actually just hash out this idea even more. So not only do we have a mesh move, not only do we have the monthly, um, not only do, do we have a, a major weekly exponential coming in around that area, but if 3250 breaks, Again, major if I'm making an assumption here, but I do strongly believe that it does get hit. It's just a matter of time to me. You know what what happens first? Uh, then yes, I look towards this blue this blue box territory between about 2300 and 2600. That's also marked off by the 886 Fibonacci retracement, as you can see in the background right over here, which is actually where Bitcoin did spike down and bottom in 2014, right over here. And if we do put on the nice volume profile uh, signature right over here, you do see that there's some massive uh, thick AF nodes coming around this region right around 2600. You know, mid 2000s. 
essentially. And you'll also notice that there's basically nothing doing uh, after, you know, 30, basically 3250 right over here. You know, there's there's just a gap in the volume profile, just like you had at 6000. So likely to be another one of those quick flushes if it does happen. Now, looking at our just looking at the setup right over here, the 10 simple is, you know, is governing price action. And this is, you know, that that's that's the lowest period one. When you start getting below there, you're in trouble. You are in fucking trouble. Um, you've been a bad boy, Mr. Bitcoin. And the fact that, you know, he's just kind of sitting right around what is actually the 200 simple. If we put that on really quick, uh, uh, it does make me apprehensive. I don't like being short coming into this area. That's that's one of the big reasons why, again, I took off this uh, position on the perps over here. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but hey, if Bitcoin actually closes below that area, which is around 3,300 on the weekly. Um, yes, I am looking towards that next level that we just spoke about around the 2,300 to 2,600. Is that area a guaranteed ultimate low? No, it's not. We need to see the reaction. But for now, um, you know, that's that's kind of the next area that I have my eyes on. And we'll assess from there, just like we assessed on this bounce right over here. And you see, you know, you see the reaction You're like, nope, that's not what a bottom looks like. Uh, so let's go back on over here. And let's just kind of flesh out why that this is likely to happen pretty damn soon. So I'm going to bring up the uh, historical volatility index, which again, helps me helps me to understand when a big move is likely incoming. Uh, let's see, I'll just I'll just use this one right now. It's it works. It works well enough. Um, but basically on the four hour, you do see that the historical volatility index is getting down to a very, very small pitter powder. Going back to our conversation about the volume signature of this formation that we're looking at, that is also coming down to a very, very small pitter powder telling us that a big move is like the consolidation is likely is it's ready. It's mature. It's it's likely going to have a big move soon. So and, and so does and, and this kind of confirms that fact volatility index. Uh, sorry, volatility rank, historical volatility rank also suggesting the same sort of a thing. Once we get below this, I mean, when you get below this area right over here, you are you could have a massive move at any moment in time. You can just see it, uh, historically speaking, anytime that you got, you kind of get down to the slow area. I mean, the last time that we were in this area was literally the break of 6,000 right over here. Then the time before that was this dump from 6,700 to 6,000 right over here. Not that crazy. But the time before that was this dump from, you know, 7,400 to 6,000 right over here. Then the time before that was right over here, you know, a nice dump from about uh, 8,000 down to 6,000 as well. So, you know, from a historical standpoint, uh, we are damn ready. Uh, DMI ADX on the four hour, by the way, also signaling a short as well. Um, and four hour Stokes still headed down as well. But again, uh, the big area for me is that 3250 ish area. So need to see that area broken with force, powerful force like Stalin. Sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, and then, yes, that, then we can talk about that move, likely a very, a very uh, impressive and uh, violent move like you saw from, you know, similar to six, the breakage of 6000 down to the mid 2000s, I'd imagine. Um, let's go check out C CMEs, how are they looking right now? CMEs basically doing the same thing as spot. In fact, CMEs look like they want to put in a little bit of a local low right here. Um, so again, you know, this is not all said and done. If Bitcoin does get back above basically that that lower high that we just put in, that we just got done putting in, um, you know, that I would not want to necessarily be bearish off that. You know, it's it's uh, I'd be a little bit more, little. I, I'd want to wait it out. I'd want to wait it out and see, you know, if we pop back up to test the 50, the, the 55 exponential on the monthly, and then probably take a position there. So again, for for spot charts, that's around 3450, 3470ish area in that zone. As long as we're below there, though, it's just another lower high. Um, so going back on over here to CMEs, do we have anything to look at on the daily, perhaps? Um, nah, daily looks basically the same. Uh, daily Stokes, yeah, still still crossed down essentially. Or sorry, they they are crossed up right now. Um, daily Jewel, oh, in the process of maybe giving a massive sell, but again, I don't like taking. I don't like taking orders from that indicator in that in that area. Uh, weekly over here just looks like continuation, just like spot charts, but even nastier. Bearish engulfing doodle right over here. Consolidation, continuation, continuation. Um, so yeah, not really getting too much unique information from that one. Let's go check out GBTC over here. GBTC quite interesting as well. This one looks like a full on breakdown out of this consolidation right over here. Uh, again, governed by your 10 simple. And uh, yes, this thing has been leading Bitcoin spot uh, for the last over a year. And to me, it does look like we are ready to roll on this baby. Remember, this was a nice, uh, what do you want to call it? Rising channel bear flag. We, can't, we we broke it to the downside right over here. Not too incredible of volume, by the way. I, I'd like to see more of a reaction, but we did pop back and test this area right over here. So far, it's been rejected. We have follow through on that. Maybe better seen on a four hour. Yeah, four, four hour looks a little bit more like a nasty rejection. Again, being harassed by that 10 simple. But I, I want to see, you know, I want to see more of a reaction, really. Uh, this is a pretty piss poor reaction as far as like a massive formation getting broken down. But you also notice that this guy does have a measure move all the way down to 
about two dollars and fifty six cents or so, which you know, according to the premium, would probably put spot charts at around twenty five, you know, mid two thousand, something like that, man. Um, okay, cool. All right, so let's go check out uh, traditional markets. Go, uh, they uh, so monthly. Oh my God, traditional markets are. You know, it's it's very interesting right now because I if I were trading this, I would not be trading this right now. It's a backward statement. Again, like I said, if you want to trade this, you you have to wait for the higher time frames to resolve themselves. And the monthly closed above the twenty one. This is like a no like a no do zone. I don't I don't like what's I mean I, I just don't see a clear. If anything, I guess I'd be a little bit bullish off this, but again, I would not be taking positions just like just like before. While it did look like uh, like like it wanted to close below the twenty-one exponential at you know in the last week, it closes you know it pumps back above and it closes above, and that's what fucking trading is, man. That's why you can't take a position. You can't tell price section what to do until something is confirmed, which is what I think a lot of people get wrong. They they want to be over aggressive, you know, thinking that they know that they're smarter than the market, but the market has a very a very nice and honest way of humbling um, uh, traders and, and and everyone. I mean myself and included i've been humbled in the past no doubt about that and I've, i think i've told my story my story a couple times here um but hey man it's not it's not you either learn you either learn trial by fire or you learn through others and uh you know you don't have to like i mean you don't have to learn trial you don't have to learn through the baptism but uh through the baptism of the market but hey a lot of people end up doing that and uh and this this is a great example right over here a lot of people trying to short everything that was pumping up all the way into here you know yeah i mean may, maybe you try a trade on the first pass of the 21 but once it takes out that level you know you, you got to really sit back and say it's possible that some news going on over here daily doodle closing above the uh, above the 200 exponential moving average right over here i mean this is I, I i don't really have any reason to be short over here daily stokes having a fresh cross up i mean we could we could easily have another uh, another another pump you know i don't know how high this one gets we do have our last highs at around this two, uh 280ish area so to imagine that's probably gonna be a sell if it gets around there um but for now you know if i were playing the ranges i you know yeah may, maybe i'd want to sell the 280 range right over here uh i don't know if i'd necessarily want to long this area right over here although things are okay i'd still be cautious you know i'd still be very cautious uh, the volume on this pump up is really starting to tail off uh could still could still do a little bit more but you know you know how high does it get before that uh, you know it could get all the way up here so do you want to sit through do you want to do you want to sit through and take it like a man before that probably not uh weekly also has continuation as well weekly is weekly is poking his massive dildo head above this uh, 21 and 55 over here i mean this is this is powerful shit um so yeah you know again i uh it's it's important for myself to just realize again if i were trading this, i don't trade traditional markets i would say you know what this is one of those times where i it's best to sit back and watch for a little bit and watch and, and wait for the ultimate you know the more obvious play to come up because that's you don't you're not forced to take a trade right now and in fact i don't believe that this is the area to be taking a trade in right now uh weekly stoke still headed up i mean they uh, looks fine over there uh weekly rsi getting getting uh, getting into the neutral zone after being in the bearish control zone for quite some time you know it's uh <clears throat> it's hard you know it's i wouldn't be taking positions either which way um let's go check out mr ripples over here mr ripples giving up a lot of his rally already uh what's <laughs> what's fucking new yeah again a rejection of the 21 exponential as soon as you know as soon as you got above it this is why i say this is really important to, to pay attention to the higher time frames i do not understand why anyone would look at anything under a daily on this guy uh three days a clear rejection of the 21 and the 10 simple i mean just immediately after that pump up yes that's not a good sign to give up almost all of your rally like immediately it's not like it's not just a pullback that's distribution <laughs> um distribution all over your goddamn bullish face uh or if you're the distributor well you get to <laughs> it's like, i shouldn't say that no you can't you can't say that kind of stuff on the internet um but yeah uh overall same thing over here though nothing's really changed you know overall yeah we did we did break the 30 to, uh, the 3450 area on the way down then we then we dropped all the way down to the to the to support down around here around the low 28 cent level came back up tested it well after you test after you test resist you know we test the support over here then we test resistance what happens next probably come back and test support uh overall not some not very good readings on this guy either uh three-day stoke still headed down um we just put in a, put in another two-day actually headed up right now interestingly enough huh um but so far rejection of this area I, I don't like the way that this is situated but hey until you actually break 28 cents ish area i don't want to be you know i wouldn't want to be too damn bearish on this guy however if and when that does break uh mid you know mid to high teens is where i'd be looking at 
And that's uh, quite a drop right over there. Not uh, not something I want to sit through. And again, as, this is certainly in play as long as you are below 34 and a half cent. The second that you get above 34 and a half cent, though, we could we could discuss other ideas. But for now, pressure is on to the downside. Uh, same thing with Mr. Stellar Lumens over here. Uh, Stellar Lumens basically looks like what it, I think a lot of things are about to look like. Actually, uh, you probably have noticed a lot of similarities. You know, you put in this, you, you put in a massive run over here. I mean, this is assuming that you're not in like a pump, like a literal pump and dump where it just pumps all the way up and then. And dumps all the way back down this one's in the process of maybe doing something similar to that but you know consolidates in this area right over here bull trap right over here down three day little death cross retest basically retest the the uh the broken support of this right over here reject Low all major movement averages as you get the three day little death cross and just heading just nose diving. Uh, there's you know, I, I think uh, it's low six cent over here is probably the next support. Uh, below that is about four and a half, uh, four and a half cent, but um, not good, man, not good at all. And as long as you're as essentially as long as you're below nine and a half cents, this is heavily bad. He good fucking English crown, heavily bad. Yeah, that's the word that I'll go for. So again, below below nine and a half cent, bad, bad. Orange man, bad. Chart bad. Chart man, bad. Um, Litecoin over here. A lot of people have been asking about Litecoin as well. Eh, one of the, I mean, it, it, it's not it's not having as it's not it's not really having the same sort of reaction as most other things. Funnily enough. Um, what can I say about it? I mean, it's basically in a range, right? Uh, it's going to do whatever the Bitcoins and, and, and Mr. Buterall's do in the wor world, which I actually forgot to look at Mr. Buterall. We'll look at him soon. But basically, you know, as long as you're above 30 bucks, it's hard to be too damn bearish. You break 30 bucks and probably get back down to like mid 20s. Uh, and as long as you're below 34 and a half bucks, there, there ain't nothing to look at to the upside right over here. Just put in a low, another lower high right over there. Not necessarily the best look on this baby. Uh, let's go, okay, let's go check out Mr. Buterall, then we'll wrap this bitch up. But uh, Mr. Buterall right over here. Um, what can we say about this? I mean, just more of the same, really. More of the same. We we did give up this horizontal movement, uh, this hor this horizontal movement average, this horizontal support right over here. Uh, now testing it as resistance. So as long as we're below 107 and a half, 107 and 75 cents, you know, more bearish than not. But uh, again, the same sort of a level that I'm looking for on this guy is this lower high that we just put in right over here. So as long as you're below 112 ish area, I'd be pretty. Pretty immediately bearish. If you get back, if you get back above the 618, though, you know, same thing as Bitcoin, back above about the 116, 117 inch area, then I think we have something new. We have, we're probably gonna have a little bit more of an extended run and something new to consider for a while. Uh, but overall, very, very nasty chart. Uh, the volume catches of this are still that of consolidation, actually. So I don't believe that we've fully seen the real move. Um, and this one has plenty of room to go. But I, I, you know, if this thing does break down, I'd be looking towards about 93 and a half bucks, something like that. All right, so we'll go back on to Bitcoin over here. Oh, I forgot to talk about the longs and shorts. We have we have gained longs and lost shorts. That's a good setup if you're bearish. Uh, Thirty-one and a half thousand open longs with about a thousand of those going up in the last day. It looks like um, versus twenty, a little bit over twenty-six thousand open shorts with about. A little over 3,000 of those heads, so it's really about 23,000 open shorts versus 31,500 open longs. Longs are paying significantly higher rate. It's getting up there. It's not necessarily too high, though, 0.036%. You're paying a little bit to hold a position, um, but not nearly as much as this. <laughs> or, sorry, not, not nearly as less as this, which is quite literally zero right now. It's like free to short. I don't understand that. Right? I, that I, I wonder if that's even right you know, on Finex for that data, but... Um, yeah, there is also positive funny rates on BitMexico right now. So longs are paying shorts to hold their positions, which are probably underwater as well right now. Anyways, let's let's uh, let's wrap this bitch up and uh, make it simple on the lower time frames. As long as Bitcoin is below 34.75, this is just another lower high and very ugly price action indeed. Doesn't mean that that Bitcoin can't can't get back above that. But if it does get back above that, I would be looking somewhere right around this point five right over here, right around 36.60. But I I don't believe that Bitcoin's going to be getting back above that. Uh, like higher than that area that's probably if, if things were to turn right around here that would probably be the high of the uh of, of the balance i'd imagine um but however you know it could also be the case that bitcoin breaks 3360 ish first and that's still not full-on doom scenario you still got 3250 down down around here but if 3250 breaks well well, you already know. So that's going to do it for today. I'll be back on with some live stream, live stream action later, um, hopefully, as I hope that we get some price action uh, as well. I'm um, looking forward to that. Uh, also want to wish you well on this lovely Friday. You made it all the way to Friday. Holy shit, man. I got a new shirt and it's a new month. So hey, happy February as well. Um, so that's going to do it for today. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon. And if not, well, take care.